Good morning, everyone. Welcoming each of you to the presentation series where our third batch of fellows of the 52 Parinde Fellowship will be sharing their, sharing about their journey, um, their reflections, learnings, and insights from the fellowship journey that they had. My name is Ashik Krishnan, and I'm one of the co-creators of Travelers University. And the 52 Parinde Fellowship is a program for youth offered by Travelers University for uh, Indian youth who are in search of their livelihoods, livelihoods oriented towards social, ecological, and personal well-being. So part of the fellowship, East Fellows explores the domain areas or the livelihood areas, the kind of themes, subjects, topics that uh, they see themselves engaging with as their own livelihood. And there are several such uh, livelihood practitioners across the country whose work takes us more closer towards um, a world of justice, a world of equality, a world of equity, and so on. So each fellows meets with around like seven to eight different livelihood practitioners across the country, staying with them for about two weeks, meeting with them, uh, exploring their work, engaging with their work, and thus having a direct learning experience for themselves. And uh, today, uh, over, we have like four of our fellows presenting uh, or sharing their journeys. Uh, the first person who will be sharing today is Susruten. Susruten is from Kochi, Kerala. And he believes in the symphony co-created by movement and restfulness. He has pursued slow-paced travel at different stages of his life. These journeys and interactions with humans and ecology helped him to slow down and create a connection with the environment. The South India Jam in 2019, which he participated in, helped him reflect on his own stories and find a connection between his rebellions and his childhood trauma. And through the 52 Parinde Fellowship, so students explored the role of collectives in emotional well-being and how individuals and communities facilitate the same. During the journey, so Sudan became intimate with facilitation and furthered his conviction to the work in the area of emotional well-being. He met amazing human beings who hold space for individuals by creating community experience for them. And for him, the journey he has been on for the past few months has opened up a deeper understanding of himself and the society around him and has strengthened his concepts about the work he would like to do in his world. And just taking you through the map of Susudan's journey. Uh, we are currently, and, and we are currently in the beautiful space of Bhumi College in Bangalore. This is where we began the journey from, like we had the orientation uh, hosted at Bhumi. And currently again, like after the journeys of the fellows, we are back at Bhumi College for the reflection and the, this presentation today is part of this uh, part of the reflection process. So over to you, Sister Then. Okay, thank you, Arshik. So uh, I want to start my presentation by saying gratitude to my family. And in this photo, you could only see my parents and my guru. But by family, I mean uh, the extended family and the friends and all the exo ecosystems that I was part of uh, in the past years. Yeah, and yeah, I want to start the presentation by thanking all of them. Okay, so I will... Uh, this is a photo of the 2019... South India Jam, and uh, I'll just say some things about the background of the journey that I took part in. So, 
for me personally itself there was always a call to be part of a tribe be part of a community and i think that's also something that is uh, innate in human nature unlike other animals we we survived with the help of a collective with the help of a tribe and today when i look around i always search for a tribe in the name of uh, equal ideologies similar interest art uh, films movies social media or like in some way i always try to get in touch with the as part of a tribe so i don't feel left alone and and that is a key emotional need as a human i have so me recognizing that help me to understand more about myself and the process of facilitating a community create creation of a community really influenced me really touched me when i first experienced it so i always wanted to recreate such spaces and this through this journey i i wanted to explore more about facilitation as a process and how different collectives see emotional well being and how uh, they i will even extend to say that how they process some of their challenges that they face in their life so yeah that is the background of my uh, fellowship journey uh, okay so uh this is the personal journey that i took as part of the 52 perinde fellowship that i am uh, mentioning here so one fact was facing my fears and what fears like what are the fears is it just the fear of a night fear of is my body going to be able to carry all the weight Th those fears are there but underneath that i think the fear there is a fear that i i grow up with there are like there is a element of fear that i always had and through this journey i i just faced a lot of uh, them i could i could talk a lot about the experiences i had at different points where where i think oh this is the extreme extreme facing my fear but then something even more extreme happened and i feel somewhere more than the theoretical understanding this helped me to get a experiential the a experiential background to face my fears yeah and then integrating the masculine and feminine which is also very similar because i i was able to stand my ground and embrace the masculine side during the journey at several points and facilitation i see uh i always get attracted to that uh, empathetic listening i feel because of the feminine side of myself which also i was able to nurture in the journey and uh, and the journey gave me uh, a lot of knowledge that i can communicate with you in a theoretical form uh, like the seeing uh, scenario of facilitation in india how the urban spaces are looking at facilitation how facilitation was already part of our culture how emotional well being were treated in different time and different part but more than that i also been able to practice facilitation because of few of my parents and i believe that also uh, gave a lot of strength in the journey for me uh so finding home that is another concept which is which is not only the physical home which is also the community which is also uh getting out of the boundaries of homes that i always hold down to such as political ideology or uh the stand or the political concept that i consider as my own so these are all the homes that i was clinging on to very much and in the journey i i embraced the traveler in me and try to get out of these boxes 
similar in the case of political and spiritual because i i come from a cultural background which i believe sometimes see these two worlds as extreme opposite in in binaries but i as a person who operate a lot from binaries i wanted to break those binaries and see the world in between or beyond these binaries and this is something that beautifully happened for me at different points and uh, i'll talk more about that in the coming so uh, so initially it is again a way of way of measuring way of tangibility that i am trying to practice uh, in this slide because uh, what are the techniques you have learned what are the what are the tools you have witnessed i could then i could connect i could list these tools because uh, my first parent they uh, sukmani she is a clown artist and also in the play activities we done so one thing that i learned from that space is that the first rule of clowning saying yes to whatever that is coming on your way so uh, i am presenting here i am worried about whether i will cross the limit of time uh, but i so but i uh, so i take the responsibility of keeping the time and that holding the responsibility alone make me afraid of being being performing in a way that is more easy and loose so throughout the journey the invitation for me was to say yes and be playful so i can i can go go like 25 minutes 30 minutes and if i go a lot beyond my friend from the uh, next room will say it's your time up go get out of the room she will show me the signal so so that space of playfulness uh, i was able to hold and that is definitely a learning i had uh, with sukmani and another thing is non violent communication uh, that i was privileged to experience with shammi and again i heard that i am not a good communicator i am not communicating properly in uh, from different points from different perspectives at different point of my life so meeting shammi changed that question into me uh, into like are we is the world communicating properly is it only me that's not communicating properly or is it the whole world that that struggles to communicate in a non violent way because that is what i have experienced there even i was a complete stranger to his space i could uh, i could communicate very freely and that is the space that he created through the tools so nvc for me is a Uh, something that i want to in integrate in my own life and something that i experienced with manu and with several people at several point of the journey so it was interesting that i never considered myself as a person who who can be a musician but by the end of the journey uh, the especially the jamming sessions we had at manu's place and uh, the the friend that i chose to take a, take with me in the journey was a rhythm instrument so again uh, these elements i would say i got gelled in with this aspect of music through the journey uh, beyond my level of comfort and beyond a space of thinking and yeah and another was theater of the oppressed activities that i saw in kerala uh, so i so these are some of the tangible again non tangible elements that i came across but then i went back to my domain what is really what i really mean by emotional well being in collective spaces so that is the next slide uh so one is i i saw the element of collective in 
as a group of human beings and coming back to bhumi college in the journey so that is where we uh, we had our orientation and this is a place where i also did another workshop so coming back to bhumi and not not only the human being but the nature itself hold a space for me a space for me to loosen up and uh, get back to that emotional balance because for me traveling for the first time to the north and uh, some of the experiences that i got in the journey such as uh, being questioned are you from pakistan because i had a beard and i was playing with a mask a green mask uh, and then again at some place at some other place i was thrown out of a dance program because i was not wearing the proper dress code so all these all these elements really unsettled me in some ways and coming back to bhumi for me uh gave me a sense of balance and then i realized the collective which hold uh emotional well being is not only human beings but it's also the nature uh also the the setting that we live in and then the other thing is the unknown going down to the unknown because i had these expectations and ideas of this will be my experience with each person but going beyond that that certain tangibility always help me in the journey and i think it always it also helps in the in the emotional well being realm as a whole and this is the lifestyle and belief system uh, this is the lifestyle i witnessed in in a space that i consider as the root of many of the facilitation works that i have experienced uh, so we always talk about creating a tribe uh, so what is happening in a tribe what is that we are trying to take from a tribe is something uh, that i always wanted to look at so there is uh, in the previous slide there was another point that is how uh dealing with grief and dealing with challenges happened uh, so in the journey in the beginning when i went to delhi for the first time i met a uh, few people who who have experienced a riot period in their life and because of their identity they were being challenged again and again and there was this one song that kept them alive that kept them going like hum dekhenge and uh, there i was sitting with two of my friends and they were they were ex explaining the the different aspects of beliefs and different aspects of culture that they convey through the song and that really touched me because uh, when the time gets more and more challenging uh, not everybody can afford the the facilitated space that that i afforded or i enjoyed or i went to see myself and another thing is holding space for emotional well being is not something that is new or not some, something that came from a different culture it was very innate in our own culture and when i say when i when i used to think that it was already in our culture again i used to go to some uh, some images and myths that is very common like i consider uh, the epics mahabharata and ramayana as psychological text where we can see archetypes of human beings but in the journey uh, so i uh, i always wanted to embrace that cultural aspect also in my life as a tool for emotional well being so how the belief system can help how the uh, how the practices can help how the lifestyle can help in keeping the balance is something that i wanted to uh, embrace but then after having these conversations at bhumi 
uh, Odisha to a tribal village, which I, uh, as I said before, I consider as the root model that we are all trying to create communities. We are all trying to create tribes. And what is it that you create as a tribe? Is something that I went to experience in but it is a story I believe which is not fully connected with the domain but without telling that story I cannot end this presentation uh, so I, I went to a community in Kalahandi village which is infamous for not being developed and and I went to the villages of Kalahandi who are who are living around the hills of Tijimali. And for me, I have experienced a hill as only one particular system. But this is again a, a series of hills, a mountain series. And there are 30 families, uh, villages that are like 20 families or 30 families living around the hills. So I, I even got the chance to live with them for a few days. So there their lifestyle itself was very different. Uh, every day at early morning, they all wake up and I was there during the harvest time. So harvesting is not a work for them. It is a collective activity and in between the spaces of two rows of house, they will keep all the, all the uh, plants they have collected and they will do the uh, taking out the grain process. I, I don't know the one word for it. So sometimes old women will come and they will do the process. And then they will move and some children will come with the cows and uh, and they will run around, run through the plants and then some men will come and they will uh, they will uh, kind of uh, shape, uh, kind of guide the, uh, the cow in particular way and then some dogs will come and do the same process and then some children will be coming and doing the same process in between so for them and their houses and the lifestyle they are always outside the houses is only a place where they go to sleep and they open their houses houses uh, for a stranger like and and the food pattern, food culture. I can talk a lot about the culture that I have experienced there. And the elements that I saw as facilitation, the, the rhythm, the music, these are not practices they do uh, consciously. For them, it comes. Uh, so somebody was sharing, when it rains, all the women just started dancing. No music. They just started dancing. Uh, and we were there during they were uh, preparing for a festival. So they just invited us and then we all played some rhythm instruments and and the rhythm and the the rhythm of body, the rhythm, the dance, these are very big part of their life. And it is being invaded. Like there is a cultural invasion that's happening. That that the generation gap they face is something that's very big compared to the space that I am coming from or the space that I am currently in. And then there is challenges. Uh, as, as long as there is bauxite minerals under these hills, currently they are fighting two corporates, but they knew as long as there is bauxite, there will always somebody will come and try to loot them. And they are resisting. They are resisting this whole looting uh, through in their own ways. So just a few months back, they were there were like it was a militarized zone. It was a very serious situation there. And some of these people who always wake up to the large sky uh, and open nature were kept in prison for three months. And they came back as as individuals. They they went from a community and they came back as individuals, as alienated, as 
as broken human beings but they still continue the fight and yeah this is another moment in my journey where i where i face the fear the the individual in me who wanted to be part of all these things uh, the the past self who who get excited by all these realities and the present me who get afraid of all these realities were in conflict while i was there and but still i believe without telling the story i cannot i cannot complete it won't be doing justice to the journey that i have experienced and this this really shook my uh, shook my concept of livelihood and the work that i'm i'm hoping to do in the future because the livelihood for me the idea is an imitation of the life stay that i saw there and while i am and while we as a community is spending our time and money in investing creating similar spaces the people who naturally had these spaces are losing their culture are losing their homes and they are being migrated to uh, kerala and other places where where they become where they are losing that emotional balance they had and maybe pr- when they become consumers when they when they become consumers who who can afford a session of therapy they will pay for pay 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees for that what they had in their life uh, as very natural and i again questioned that is that what i am doing am i am i offering something that is really natural in a, in the mode of a commodity uh, so that part of my journey really shook my ideas and world views and then uh, then i came to chennai where again i saw people how people deal with grief uh, such as i attended a margaril makkal is a event there so this people uh, they are singing gana songs and giving like very uh, fast rhythm and everybody is dancing 500 people 1000 people are dancing but the person who sings tells a story about the time he spent in jail and how that how his life changed after being in jail so then i realized there are ways in which the in the culture people embrace this element even before and the boundaries of doing it in urban space doing it in a rural space also for me i am sitting with a lot of questions right now i would say about my livelihood but again what i experienced back in kerala in my context of life situation uh give me hope that there is the need of this particular work there are a lot of people who uh, who needs this work in my circles uh, in the spaces and i can also try to make make it uh, affordable or approachable uh, for a lot of people who are coming from my context so this is the concept of livelihood that i am sitting with right now and again this is something that i uh, look in the way forward as as uh, as to learn and uh, the principle saying yes to whatever comes in my mind and bowing down completely to the unknown to the elements of uh, and try to see things beyond the binaries these are some of the values that i am trying to keep intact in the coming journey and i don't know what is uh, the life has for me but i'm prepare i am like hoping to see whatever that comes and then yeah now i have to look at the time okay. so there is time to chat uh gratitude to the homes actually if i if i was better at editing photos in canva i would have put a lot of faces a lot of people a lot of spaces a lot of put uh, 
so i am thankful for all those individuals and all those spaces that welcomed me as one of their own and uh, i i believe i didn't know this much is possible this this much space is available for me out my bubble of small life and it is a big learning for me and i am really thankful for that aspect and then humans since i started my journey from bhumi and reached delhi there like if i start naming them the list will go on there, there are a lot of people uh, who suddenly gave me not only their houses they 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 enriched my journey in different ways and they shared their life with me at a different point of the journey i felt what i am trying to uh, learn or what i am trying to give back to the world is already happening in very tiny tiny ways because i was holding spaces for a uh, conversation between individual i was holding spaces uh, to have more open conversation between a group of friends and there were people who made food for me even though like while i was traveling there were people who came to see off me uh, in the railway station there there are like people uh, to whom i cooked uh, who ex- uh, who i experimented with with my cooking skills so there are like lot of people in the journey uh, who i am really thankful for and uh yeah and then this this is the first photo i chose for a livelihood because for me a livelihood currently looks like that sun it is very small it is it is very uh, far away from me I, and i have like lot of distractions in between me and the a livelihood that i am uh, trying to get in touch with but but i but that small ray of sunshine uh, gives me hope uh even if the world i saw was really challenging and there are a lot of elements for being hopeless hopeless i i believe in that small ray of uh, sun which invoked the sense of hope in me and i want to pass it give it out to the world that is that's how i'm seeing the journey thank you thank you sustradan for that like highly very open and like highly reflective sharing um yeah so now we have about you know 20 minutes for q and a to happen so if any of you have any questions to ask uh, or like share your own thoughts uh, based on what uh, sustradan presented uh, this is the, now the space uh but before that like i would like to share with everyone that this presentation is being done in a hybrid manner which means there are like actual like people sitting in front of us then like there are like our team members the the co fellows our friends and elders at bhumi college who are like in the room with us then now and also uh, about 20 people have joined via zoom uh, so now the space is open to all for uh, sharing or asking questions to sister that uh, so those who are on zoom you can uh, unmute uh, yourselves and uh, ask the question and like and people who are like already in the room they can you know directly ask the questions so yeah hi hi uh, ashik hi hi sir she it was nice hearing you. so i uh, i joined a bit late so maybe this is a, perhaps out of curiosity and you may have also 
uh, may have mentioned this earlier in the presentation. Uh, so I'm curious to know more about the uh, Kalahandi project. Like, what what was your parinda there? What was the project <clears throat> all about? I uh, fortunately heard your bit on the reflection, but uh, I was just curious. So in, in case you have uh, already mentioned it, I'm sorry I missed it. I as I said, I joined a little late. So yeah, and also congratulations on completing. It was very nice to hear about your overall reflections. Yeah, I, Ashik, I can take the question. Yes, yes, you. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the community there I met is the Goan community. Uh, I haven't mentioned the name of the community. And uh, and the project that is happening is currently uh, their hills are auctioned to two corporates like Adani and Vedanta. And they are, uh, their community there has a right uh, according to the Schedule 6 and PESA Act. So they are trying to fight this invasion with their right and as it happens in different other parts of the country and the world, they're being uh, oppressed for that. They are like, currently the, there are police cases and uh, arrest happen, but um, and they they know that this is not a struggle that is that is very short term. So they are also they are looking forward to that. That was the time when I went there and and I also been able to meet a lot of elders who work with different movements in Odisha, and uh, so they shared a lot of knowledge about the disp displacement and the development. Uh, that they are facing there and that that I feel the community was my parente there and I saw them as a root, as a tribe who who live in a balanced uh, way and I could see that there. I could see the balance of their life, the rhythm of their life there. But I could also see the challenges that they are facing and that was another element which was alive for me in the journey. Uh, that is the political questions I had. Yeah, I think that is. Thank you, Snyder. Thank you. Um, hi, um, thank you for being so honest and open about your journey. Um, and I have already met you, so I know you as a person also from Delhi, I feel, and and your internal struggles also. Uh, so I just have one question, uh, one question actually. Uh, so what assumptions you had about this, about the concept of a livelihood uh, before starting this journey? And after now this journey has been like completed, you can say, uh, what assumptions got broken or what assumptions turns out to be true? Anything like, um, you want to share? Assumptions, uh, I would say one was it, it is not really common in the cultural context that I am coming from was one of the assumptions that I had that I didn't knew many people who facilitate in the Kerala and by the end of the journey, I was able to be in the facilitated space in Kerala itself. And uh, that changed and that changed how I can, how the cultural context also matters. Because uh, I I used to think it, it is something that only happens in urban spaces. That urbanness is very important to 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 follow such an livelihood. And that changed for me by the end of the journey because there were spaces where they didn't use the word facilitation, such as the cuckoo forest community that I went to near Thiruvannamalai. They, they won't use the word such as facilitation, but what I have experienced 
by being part of that community is in a way i would say uh, facilitated uh, to balance the emotional realm i had because i was not uh, the activities i was taking part in the activities and i again had the feeling of being part of a community community that is non judgmental and uh, that helped to understand the idea of facilitation from a, like bigger lens uh, i would say yeah i think that so, so, so question from adil hi sushruten thank you for your presentation really deep and moving i had a question what was a tribal view of living and non living in our textbooks rocks are classified as non living how do they see a, how do they see living and non living uh, thanks for the question adil because this was uh, the the belief system and the the relationship they had with nature is something again uh, that that attracted me to the space uh, so i was able to go to some of the belief spaces believe uh, the the ritual spaces that they have in their space and uh, as a person who is co coming from a different setting i was looking for some red sindoor or some idol or but this was just some trees and they underneath that tree there were some stones which are currently uh, they are uh, the soil has covered them but they know that they are in the still same spot and they worship them uh, before uh, before harvesting and after harvesting and it is not a ritual that every year these months no it it happens while they harvest it is like asking permission to the uh, nature before uh, before harvesting and then giving back to nature after the harvesting and another element was we were asking what is the name of this particular deity and they were singing a song as the response because for them the deity's name are connected in a way that uh, like so kutikura something that, so they were the elder women of the community was singing the names of and for them uh, the everything is connected in that the nature the hill there so they call that those places devasthans uh, and in that village also they have a devasthan where again i search for a symbol where i can see a god but there was nothing but it was a worship space for them and uh, and another thing my friend mender there randall shared is that uh, in their language Um, they won't say oh my god they won't use uh, the god term in in that way they will say oh my father or my oh my grandfather so uh, so for them and these gods these devasthans and the deities they uh, worship there they i felt more they they have a huge respect for them but again their relationship is not at a uh, very hierarchical like a god and a disciple it was it was more like sometimes i felt maybe it's very personal uh, observation sometimes i felt they are very friends with the they are not afraid to say the name they enjoy saying the name <laughs> they they celebrate even saying the name of the they, they but but they are also the keepers of this knowledge they won't show it to any anyone who enters their village we we were there for a purpose because of the purpose they show us this uh, knowledge and in the by the change of generation this knowledge is also not being that much shared to the coming communities and that is something also us there i think that answer Yes, we can take a few more questions before the next presentation.
So Ashwini here shared a question that well-being and facilitation were two words that I hold be before entering the journey. And what is the current relationship I hold uh, with these two words? Uh, so again, I uh, got strengthened in the journey because I had a concept that well-being is not something that that is commod that is a commodity and the uh, at different points different people are seeing it as commodities but facilitators are the least devils <laughs> least of the devils who who at least respect the uh, agency of the people they are holding because one thing which was very strongly shared was we are not doctors, we are not healers. We are not the people who take the responsibility of solving somebody else's problem. We are just holding space for a for a group of uh, individuals. So, so whatever emerges for them, uh, we are holding the circle so that they can engage with them or they can choose not to engage with them. And uh, and we, I, as a person, will involve with my own experience. I will, I will share more about the journey that I had, and the emotions that I experienced in facilitated spaces, and uh, that gave me a sense of comfort also because being vulnerable is something that I'm, I'm trying to practice again and again. And if that makes me a facilitator. And uh, as a facilitator, I don't need to have a physical structure or a posture or something that reminds others of a figure that is higher than them. Then I, because I felt more confident in the journey uh, through about my own facilitation. And well-being again, uh, well-being is a is an individual responsibility also. Uh, so initially the word collective was the only thing, but by the end of the journey I also added the word individual, per personal, because the time I spent with Kaushik and in unlearning ashram, some how effect, uh, affected me in a way that I need to keep on working on myself, some of the practices that I have. And then the collective, the tribe also uh, plays a role in the well-being that. Uh, so those are some of the aspects that got strengthened for me. And again, I am finding more and more strength to say that well-being is not something that that only needs to be looked at from a modern medicine point of view. We can also embrace the cultural elements even at this uh, dangerous period of time where Indian culture is used for non-well-being things. I think even now we can embrace the elements that are that are not only in the cultures of uh, the Ramayana and Mahabharata, but also in the cultures of the Dalits of Tamil Nadu and the tribes of Odisha. And I believe we can embrace all these elements and context should, and give a context to our uh, our well-being. No, and take give more caste, class, gender, cultural context to the concept of well-being will be more helpful is something that I reflect upon at the, this point. Yes, um, and there's another question by Aditya Singh in the comments. Thank you so much for bringing so much, so courageous. Thanks, sir. Thank you so much for bringing so courageous to take this journey. As you spoke about emotional well-being, my question is currently, our country is going through a socio-political turmoil and depression. How can we as collectives and individuals take care of our emotional health while also engaging in protests and raising our voices. 
i think the question is not can we we should in the way how we we could like uh, because like i this is something very personal I, i would say this question is something very personal because i uh, used to think that my well being is only something that is that is uh, very closed and uh, something that is very personal and something that stays in a very small bubble but the journey again reminds me how i am not living in a bubble uh, because the the things that disturbs me emotionally is not only the things that that are very physical very present to me like i'll be definitely upset if if i lose a job or somebody get angry at me some conflict happens in my house that that will definitely affect me but what affect me uh, also is uh, maybe through the news or maybe through the social media or whatever that's out there the the world that's out there also affect me and and this is something that we are discussing here while we are doing this reflection workshop also because uh, how how we can balance and i would say i don't have an answer of answer about how we can balance but we should balance or we ought to be not 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 to use the word should Uh, so we ought to be balancing we ought to be finding a balance between the socio political conflicts that are out there and the personal well being yeah, is something and as i mentioned these people i have met they are not people who doesn't have well being so uh, the life in odisha is not a life that is without challenges even if the corporates are not invading them their life is challenge they every day they are going to forest and they are like looking after their crops when some animals can come and attack them so their life is anyway is very challenging but the concept of emotional well being for me is not the absence of challenge but how we how we balance how we uh how we stretch ourselves as uh, i would say there is a particular variety of rice in kerala which is called pokkali so at to some level if we take care of that rice after reaching a certain age whatever amount of saline water comes to the field the pokkali will rise beyond the water and so so we can we can gain a strength that that helps us to go beyond the challenges and well being is for me if i am trying to run away from the political or social situations that i am in then the life is not challenging i am escaping the challenges so in a way for me yeah <laughs> these are some of the things that came up for me i i wouldn't even give it give it a perfect ending because i don't have one right. thank you that's wonderful maybe you can take one more question uh, before we move to the next uh, sharing what food did you find the most challenging to you what did you do with you Uh, yeah <laughs> so it it was not only the food it was also the timing of food so when i was traveling ah okay so the question was what was the most challenging food that i experienced in the journey and and when i was in gujarat we were attending garba and all food were new to me all of the food items were new to me and i was trying to taste and even my host were so welcoming and they want me to taste everything so the and the breakfast was a very big uh, like, there were four five dishes for breakfast 
and for lunch also we went out to a cafe and we had like pasta pizza this that and it was like a huge uh, and all of the food were nice i won't say they are bad food but for me it was too much uh, and at some point uh, they offered me uh, chawal and uh, dal dal chawal and that i had like two three full bowls and i think so that uh, before whatever i had before having the dal chawal was very challenging for me <laughs> like i i really struggled to uh, you know make sense of the foods that are coming on my way <laughs> yeah thank you sushruten i think maybe we can close with that yeah thank you everyone for listening <laughs> yeah and we can move to the uh next 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 presentation which is which will be by aditya so uh like in the meanwhile by the time like aditya joins and sets uh, like the meeting is set up i would like to introduce to you uh, this book which was documented by our first batch of fellows so one of the key outputs of the fellowship is that the fellows they document uh, the stories of the allied practitioners whom they met with and learned from uh, so the first batch there's a collection of 51 stories like st stories of 51 allied to practitioners from across the country uh working across the themes of alternatives in education place based education arts based facilitation conservation coexistence food systems agroecology uh independent media community work and more uh, i'm also pasting the link as you can also download uh, the online version of the book uh, so i'm pasting the link in the chat box in a while um, and if you would like to have a physical copy of the book for yourself uh, you can also like write to us you can email to us uh, the details of which again you will find in the link provided in the chat box right mm. uh, so the next fellow who will be sharing their fellowship fellowship experience with us is aditya verma aditya is from dehradun uttarakhand and aditya had explored the domain of activism and filmmaking through the fellowship so aditya is an interdisciplinary artist from dehradun his art practice has been guided by his emotional maneuvering of the changes around and within himself through his work aditya engages with environmental socio political and educational concerns as a part of the 52 per in the fellowship aditya took a journey to meet with activists and art practitioners across india who are exploring different forms of activism through their work wanting to understand the role of resilience activism and art in contemporary india from what has been lost and from what remains aditya hopes to use his learnings from the fellowship journey to build resilience and active participation among the people in the coming among the people in the coming times his conviction is to continue developing layered sensibilities and empathy by using film practice as a medium of documentation and archival of histories and resistance to build right based conversations in spaces where it lacks and is needed the most so here is a view of uh, the map like the like where it goes like where aditya traveled 
and like he would like to begin with this poem so i'll be playing this poem and you can read also read the lyrics on the screen side by side हम परवरिश लोह कलम करते रहेंगे हम परवरिश लोह कलम करते रहेंगे जो दिल पे गुजरती है रकम करते रहेंगे जो दिल पे गुजरती है रकम करते रहेंगे हम परवरिश लोह कलम करते रहेंगे so uh, the whole music is not in playing uh, but you can read the rest of the lyrics on the screen uh, and so over to you aditya thank you aditya so can we go on the next slide please so uh, in this journey i explored activism and its intersection with art so uh, so i started my journey from assam uh spoka khan where i was engaged with parnab dolde activist and politician so with him i explored the form of different act activism and the issue he was uh, he and other activ activist was uh, working and engaging with so there i found like there was like uh, there was different uh, issues inter uh, inter politics of uh, of types and also uh, like kazi existence of kazi ranga itself like as a national park and a fortress model of uh, environment conservation and what was it was doing with the tribes which was residing just next to it and and as i was interacting with the tribe itself and being part uh, of the day to day activity and participatory methods so i realized like how the existence of a national park was uh, like changing their uh, relationship with forest and their environment itself because now when there is a monopoly of a, of a monopoly over the forest so they lose somewhat connection but their tradition and uh, uh, existence are based and very much connected to the nature and what is happening so this is this constant tussle between you know state and tribe was going on and uh, other than that i was also uh, looking at the inter tribe politics like between like there are different tribes deciding who uh, who were brought there by britishers uh, and to work in a tea garden and how like uh, like tribes who were mul nivasi from there used to look at them and what was the conversation and things were going between them like uh, when there was a inter tribe marriages how used to family used to react on this and uh, so this was uh, uh, like this what i uh, was seeing there and how, how youth was protesting and uh, you know uh, like 
uh, engage with uh, dialogue with their own uh, uh, tribal politics as well as the state. So it's not just like uh, not just the state Kaziranga, but also within the tribe, what was happening. So yes, uh, the, this was my uh, of like uh, the exploration I did in Assam, and then later on, my journey was more towards intersection of art and activism. So then I went to Shillong to explore uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the medium photography and uh, used to document culture and also uh, to look at specifically living tradition of uh, uh, Garo and Karbi tribes. So there was this photographer who were working there for three years now, Kiti Kumari and her work is morally documenting this uh, like living heritage of uh, like the bridges over there, which they construct. And how uh, they, so basically uh, as a political uh, uh, thing that Shillong has is that it's come under the six schedule. So, and uh, so how, uh, how like, and so the, so what was happening there was a total diff opposite that I see in Assam. So like uh, they have more connection towards like their forest as they had, you know, they had uh, like continuing their uh, community practices of conservation, uh, taking, care of, taking care of their land and ownership also of, uh, and and uh, and the participation they, they used to do was very unsaid. Like, so I, uh, there was this uh, Kong, I visited forest which he took, the to Kong is a Didi in, uh, uh, in Khasi language. So, so I walked with them, uh, walked with her and she introduced us to this bridge and well the first thing she did she she reached the bridge and started knitting it and it was very and the way the, the thing I saw was he okay like she she didn't cross the bridge she just started like from the start to beginning she started knitting it and then that's how she crossed and that's the relationship I explore and she was also looking at the same thing like how like females are connected and other elements and how they uh, like take a collective decision of uh, like uh, 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 maintaining the forest itself. So yeah, that was my uh, observation in Meghalaya. And then later on, I went went to uh, uh, Bhopal where I was engaged with a collective called Iktara Iktara Collective, which make who makes film uh, uh, on. Uh, different uh, issues, uh, gender, caste, uh, 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 also like uh, 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 politics of, you know, resources and, uh, and uh, yeah, so like there I was also looking at the, their own structure of creating a collective and how they function itself and how they are connected to these issues and how they take a stance on, on it through filmmaking. Uh, so uh, I I watch their films. I look at them, decode it as an art like as an art practitioner myself. So I was like seeing like what kind of techniques they use, how they used to write scripts. So we used to have extensive uh, talks on uh, like uh, script writing, like how they they like they they always used to do it uh, like when they write a script of film, they used to do it in a collective workshop kind of a form where everybody can you know bring in their own politics, what they feel internally. And all, uh, so that was my observation in Bhopal. And later on, I went to Chennai uh, after that. And uh, there I was uh, like uh, 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 engaging with Palani Anna, who is an uh, Dalit uh, photographer. Uh, and and he talks about, uh, he documents a lot of uh, 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 Dalit issues in Tamil Nadu and across, like also in other states. So, so like she, he, sorry, he was uh, specific, uh, uh, there I was specifically looking on how when, you know, uh, like, uh, uh, like when, like it's always been a Savarna person going to a tribe or the land and covering their issues. But this thing, when, when this thing breaks, when Panini and the document his own issues and the connection he has with his own politics that centers him a lot. So what narrative changes, like how he not just cover the issue, but also go back on family level, how their uh, how their family works, how how love for them is, and which which is always missing in you know like on uh, the other side, like uh, of when somebody else from outside the community wins because.
they don't they don't realize a lot of things that he himself has insight for. So yeah, so that was my journey. Then I went to uh, Uttarakhand. Uh, like after that, I went to Uttarakhand. And there I uh, was engaged with Hebalwani Community Radio, uh, who are uh, who are trying to preserve, uh, you know, their own culture. So that that's the only radio which is which function in Garhwali language, which talks about local issues. Uh, of uh, you know, uh, recently, like we have seen in Uttarakhand, uh, there is Bhumi Kanun ka issue, which is uh, which is like they actively was voicing that and different issues of you know, uh, like uh, small small things. Like uh, like Kheti kam kyo hai, environment change ho hai, or these things for you know bring uh, uh, sensitivity among among the community that they they are uh, based. Uh, so yeah, and also like Heval Valley Valley is Valley is a whole belt. So that valley's issues also. Uh, so yeah, that that was uh, where uh, like this this was my journey, and I would like to play a video. So like. I'm an individual person, so like you can see the video and uh, like so, yeah. Obviously, when someone has explored filmmaking, there has to be a video to convey or communicate to the people, right? I think video is lagged. That happens. देश कागज पर बना नक्शा नहीं होता कि एक हिस्से के फट जाने पर बाकी हिस्से उसी तरह साबुत बने रहे और नदिया पर्वत शहर गांव वैसे ही अपनी अपनी जगह दिखे अनमने रहे यदि तुम ये नहीं मानते तो मुझे तुम्हारे साथ नहीं रहना है यदि तुम्हारे घर के एक कमरे में आग लगी हो तो क्या तुम दूसरे कमरे में सो सकते हो यदि तुम्हारे घर के एक कमरे में लाशें सड़ रही हो तो क्या तुम दूसरे कमरे में प्रार्थना कर सकते हो यदि हाँ तो मुझे तुमसे कुछ नहीं कहना है I don't know before the manual scavenging, when I'm going to start the manual scavenging work. I don't know before. I don't know what's happening in the uh, caste system. Mostly I am uh, <clears throat> oppressed with the caste, but I don't know. I am oppressed for this kind of uh, issue. Uh, we doesn't have any land. Still now we have no pata land. So everything's based on caste. So I need a, at the time I was land about caste, the particular work only. When I'm going to start this work, I know I'm 
I learn about myself and learn about the society. The society full of made up costumes. So the manual is given. Everybody know, but the, it's banned. It's banned. So it's somebody going to be died in manual. It's a murder case. If you going to file the manual, murder case only. So still now no one arrested for the murder case. Yeah, it's possible that there must have been a delay in the video being uh, like video buffering. So yeah, yes, Aditya. Can can we go on the next slide? So yeah, uh, livelihood and. Uh, um activism and filmmaking my own practice so so like after this journey what i took in uh, what i took uh, so like so, so it was all, always a question where i where i stand so so like um, so like after this journey i believe like it was not a clear answer for me like also but i believe that uh, i will continue my own art practice and question this structures that are created and uh, participate uh, as much as, as I can in things that I believe in, the value I stand for, and uh, not not standing or taking a stance back, but always taking a stance forward to uh, voice my within what I feel. So that I, you know, uh, I get like I, in the end, I realized after this journey that I took. Uh, uh, other than that, yeah, like, uh, uh, yes, I, I can like go forward or for questions or anything. Like, next slide. Yeah, I would like to thank my family. And family doesn't mean my intimate family, but the family I created in the whole journey. So uh, they, they are my family. So I am well, like, wherever I, uh, when people open doors for me and uh, treat me as their own child because somewhere I, like in the whole process there was a lot of vulnerability in, within myself so there were people who used to like uh, like people used to like cheer me up sometime when I was very low so and we built build a very intimate connection so yes so not just my intimate family but family and uh, also my co-fellows for uh, thank and the TU team for making this journey happen and for constantly uh, pushing me further. Yes. In the questions. Yeah, so the friends are joined, uh, like via Zoom, you can unmute yourselves and um, ask Aditya, or you can also share your thoughts with Aditya. Hi, uh, hi, Aditya. Hi, Ashik again. <laughs> uh, wait a moment, Snehirshi. I think there's a question that has come up from the room. Uh, like, so I'll let Aditya speak, like, what it is. Yeah, 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 sure. So, uh, Ashik, we can take uh, a question like Rahul is typing. The okay, question. So the question at the moment. Like, yeah, we can take it like somebody was asking something. Okay, Snehirshi, uh, you can unmute yourselves and ask Aditya. 
Hi. Um, oh, I don't have a question, uh, so to speak. Uh, it just uh, I was curious that video uh, before starting there was a brief quote uh, which uh, I believe I didn't get the time to uh, go through. So I thought it would be interesting, and I think many of us uh, who are joining through Zoom uh, couldn't read it, and uh, I thought it took it that quote built the crux of the. Uh, subsequent uh, clip, clips that uh, Aditya had kindly composed. So I, that's it. I just would like to read to get the take. And uh, yeah, congratulations, Aditya, on uh, covering a very long journey. I can be from far northeast to Bhopal to Tamil Nadu. It's, it's, it's a long country. And, and uh, so has the journey been? Congratulations on completing and uh, really interesting perspectives uh, I could see that you have gathered from uh, the lit photographer in Tamil Nadu to uh, communities in Assam and Meghalaya. So yeah, congratulations. Yeah, that's it. And also lovely video. I Even despite the lag, I could see uh, the compilation of the clips and uh, yeah, so yeah. Ashik, can you play that video and pause, like the thing? Or, yeah. Yes, exactly. So, uh, like this, this thing that uh, from which like this was my understanding when I started the journey. So from this understanding, I went on that like this was the question in my head. Like yes. So later on, this videos continues to like uh, what was the question was throughout the journey that I felt. So, and and the things that I witnessed and uh, encountered throughout journey. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, this. Uh, yeah, this is very interesting because uh, as you have navigated all these uh, diverse spaces, I'm sure you have noticed how even within uh, many of the oppressed communities, uh, they have their own ways of exercising sovereignty, be it through a Dalit filmmaker uh, clicking photograph of his own community. So yeah, maybe you could uh, elaborate a little more on that. How uh, these alternative ways of exercising sovereignty, what does what do they mean vis-a-vis uh, -vis what we know uh, or rather what you have termed here as majoritarian politics or the way that the state does so? Yeah, that's, I think that should be an interesting question for the rest of us too. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Aditya, again. Like, uh, like, uh, like, when when we talk talk about sovereignty, like when I was in Assam, uh, so when I was interacting with tribes over there, so like it, it like, uh, like after my parents, I, I I lived uh, in a village. Uh, now it's a village, but before that, it's a like it's a settlement, which was and the settlement which. My friend's uh, grandpa, uh, grandfather built, and uh, and I like the way that uh, the whole thing is structured. So there is no uh, walls. There are houses, and anybody can walk through them. So the idea, the idea of uh, uh, you know boundaries doesn't exist. But when 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 there was a, there, and the next to it is an embankment, and next is Kaziranga. So when when we used to stand on the embankment, so there this this thing, you see that is Kadiranga, and if you cross there, they will shoot you, and and then 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 you see that embankment becomes a very you know, a very thing to uh, 
make you realize there are two things and there are two philosophies that are contradicting and exist in the same time. And that's how like I see it. So 780, they exercise, exercise this at their on the on the other side of appointment, their own way. Because they're sharing uh, the practices that do they do and uh, the way they uh, engage in their daily life. So women, so, and they, they are very skilled uh, uh, people. So they uh, they every day they have a lot of works from agriculture to, like, to build a trap for fishes. So like, and they do it very collectively. Uh, so there was this one moment when I was uh, sitting on a magband and they were uh, uh, like you know, skimming uh, the bamboos for the net that they make. So they were doing it together and they were joking about uh, the, the politics itself. So women was telling me like, uh, let, let's go and uh, uh, like go that side. And that is, I know I, we can't go that side because it's Kadi Ranga and they will shoot. But they were, she was laughing about it. Let's go and uh, bring some dekya from there. So dekya is a local uh, thing that they cook, prepare uh, a meal out of. So like, and it's it's a very funny thing that you know this is this is the reality that they face and they are very very sure like what is going on. So the the gate itself like it's out of outside of a Kaziranga. Like the Kaziranga gate, it's not in the park but on the community land. And like and these things, these things they you know uh, they they say they take it very seriously and they think about it, but they also joke about it at the very time to always make it exist within their uh, you know, circles. So when you joke, it, it's not just the joke. You keep the context alive. You keep the thing that you are protesting amongst the people alive. So yeah, that's, I feel, it's an interesting thing I observed. Yeah. It, like, this is what... Like, hey, yeah, thanks, like. thanks, thanks for uh, answering the question. And uh, as is today, the Republic Day, I think, here's to the many republics that exist within the Republic of India. Thanks, Aditya, for sharing. Yes, and there's a question, question from the room. Hi, Aditya. In your journey, you have explored various social political issues like caste, gender, climate change, development, etc. My question is how these intersect and how do you see yourself in between these intersections? I think I see myself holding a camera. <laughs> That, that's what my stand is like I will continue like so uh, so I, I will do it like I will make films with with this uh, uh, insight and sensitivity that this journey gave me to you know that unfold many layers when I can actually articulate what I want to do and what I want to say when it comes to um, taking a stand and also not just me but by the participation that with the space that I'm engaging with. So it's not like my story, my thing, but also through a participation, I want, I would like to do it. Yes. Okay, so I, I do have a question, Aditya. Um, so it's like, can you, I would like to know more about the context of this image, this photo that you have used in your presentation. The story behind this photo. Yes. So I think this is my art practice. <laughs> so uh, while I was in Assam, uh, so I did another, uh, like we were, we were talking, like we were like in the night, we were discussing what can we do. There are lots of problems. And I was like, Ki, uh, like, I'm a, like, what should we do exactly? Like, because Padna and I had a long conversation around like why people don't come out of houses and protest and why it's so hard to build, uh, you know, a movement. And then I realized that let's let's do a screening on a moment of of a different uh, like you know from a different uh, part of India and how, and let's see what is the reaction of of uh, you know people like who are uh, like from here and to build and we thought of building a cross you know cross state so uh, tribal politics solidarity and that's what the idea basically and we did crowdfunding and then uh, we uh, so. So we did the crowdfunding and uh, we got a good fund. Uh, uh, we collected around twenty five thousand rupees, and I bought three cameras. When I'm when I am carrying and two other camera, I, I uh, left it there to uh, to screen more films. 
so we did did this screening of uh, lakir ke istraf by shilpa bilal which is which covers the whole 35 years of uh, narmada bachao andolan and and uh, meeda pankar as a center character in it uh, and so yeah so we screened it uh, like we did four five four to five screening with 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 the community participation it was not like yeah, i was there with a the projector but so i just had a projector but uh, somebody was bringing a stable uh, like uh, extension board from their house somebody was uh, helping uh, you know uh, uh, making the screen ready for the screening and somebody was give, giving stool somebody bring chair somebody bring some other things and somebody bring speaker big uh, dj speaker and that's how we did the screening and it was uh, this in this day it was 40 plus people and there was no space so people were standing and uh, watching the film and for it's it's a film for one hour so they stand for one hour and so and there was total silence like i, I like a total silence when the film ended and people were like and 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 i could see the silence was the answer in itself because it 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 connected with them like and there are interviews where people are talking about how you know uh, like government had uh, given like in this film there is a section where they they uh, actually see rehabilitation and relocation uh, uh, infrastructure that government built for them to you know bring to come back and live there so and uh, and and it, and this is the reality of of uh, uh, of the space i am engaged with here so this agratoli village will will, will eventually be evacuated by the government and they have always already proposed 10 edition of a man 10 editions of rehabilitation so now they are like they will do in in future so this is in that film it it is it they can see their future and they can see like what steps are needed to fight and how much long you have to fight and it continues and continues yes so yeah this was the story behind this picture thanks thank you for sharing that aditya inviting more uh, hi aditya i am vivek uh the question i have is um hello yes uh, vivek you can hear you yeah please yeah yeah so uh, uh mine is also a very simple question of how i mean uh, if i'm understanding it correct is facilitating um counter perspectives or um activism uh your idea of uh, a livelihoods am i uh, getting it right and also um how do you think uh, in the places uh, not very accessible and with the rise of new media how do you think uh, you know film making um, i mean you know still is relevant in smaller screenings and all uh, am i clear with my question Uh, I think like uh, uh, like uh, film film is a powerful tool to facilitate lot of dialogues uh, and I felt it while like while uh, uh, before also like uh, this uh, so when I talk about dialogues there there are like there uh, before also like taking the journey I was uh, actively active active in this uh, you know. process of making film also in uh, screening because the the and the like past uh, in my past i was working with an ngo called samaj pragati so they had a media media unit and they used to make films on regional issues uh, 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 and uh, there it's a community media so people who are in that media are from the community itself and making the film on their own issues and uh, and they have started like long back when there was no you know mobile phones and such so like there there, there are like inter interesting uh, like things that you know came out of that uh, that media existence so when when uh, bar, like I, i also used to go in some of the screening and uh, witness like how people used to react to films when they when they listen 
the narrative in their own language and the people that who is next living next who used to live with them like doing you know organic farming or doing other interventions or you know so yeah they like people used to connect with the stories and there was a change i believe and like uh, like the screening i did in assam uh, after that uh, that i mentioned the silence right so that silence after that silence people were murmuring with themselves and talking oh uh, like look uh, did you heard that person saying ki kya ghar tha wo kitna chhota sa ghar tha fir kahan jayenge and this this kind of a thing was uh, within uh, like started like happening yeah so yeah i believe like uh, film is a proper tool and this was the question yeah and and the also a follow up question if they can uh, uh in the last question you answered i'll be there with the camera uh, do you think as a filmmaker uh, you can come with a neutral stance uh new like i think new neutral is nothing like like how can i be neutral as like this is the question like how i'm i am also thinking like what is neutral like nothing is neutral right and new a neutrality is the problem i believe and where we are right now is because a lot of a lot of people are neutral because if there is no like there is no constant you know uh, like retaliation against anything that that is happening wrong and uh, like uh so i believe that that is that is not good and we have to take stand yes. neutral new like if you talk about film being neutral i think uh, the moment i start editing it lose its neutrality because i will push my push certain narrative in it by editing it and because there is like there will be a, a agenda not agenda but something uh, like in it yes thank you uh so the kennedy bully type this question sorry so uh, so there is this question on uh, like on the line that i made uh, majoritarian like in the uh, video so it's, it's always been a majority major to terrian like uh, politics because like like i have had conversation where people have told me like how after independence uh we were pushed to next side of a hill uh, like tribes tribes uh, telling me like how they were pushed by the indian army on the next side of a hill and other side is china so it it was it was always there i believe and it now it has taken a more evident form so it's not like ki other parties have not been you know uh, doing this whole thing of uh, of uh, pushing people from a from a lens of majority arian politics because i yes I mean, so you can say about minorities, like different parts of the country, different people. Where it seems to be the very strict discrimination, and to push minorities to whatever to open why are they some is very open minorities. 
So, like answering your question, like in terms of Tamil Nadu, so like I attended this event while I was in Germany. Uh, uh, Dalit literature, my own experience. So where I, I like where there was uh, testimonials by the people who were actively participated in uh, communism, rise of communism in Tamil Nadu, and they the, the party who is ruling. So uh, how they came into power, they were sharing, and how they were the Dalits were the foot soldier for that, but they never get any uh, like any seats seat sharing in the end. They were never get got the power. So how this all the, like and they were sharing how communism failed them their whole thing and then how people used to uh, look at their meetings and literature they formed they always used to say the lit literature is nothing they used to say it's just uh, uh, just drinking and abusing that's actually the the lit culture so th it's, it's it's always maintaining the power within and even even if it's in um, uh, like you know minority. But there is always a power hegemony that plays, and it's very certain. Like, like even though like I was in uh, I was in Chennai, and Chennai is divided into two parts, and it's very evident. Marada Chennai and you know, and and you can see what like who actually runs the city and who are taking uh, you know uh, like like because of caste existence who are taking benefit out of it. And yes, globalization is an issue, and it's because yes, like people people are like taking. But yeah, it's economy. Yeah. So globalized economy system, yes. So they 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 are like like everything, like if you if if I go out, the existence of McDonald's is problem for a local person. Like because because they are like uh, you know uh, like actually uh, like uh, hurting the local economy over there. Because no not other person are, you know. So that thing that where we are investing, where we are going. Is I think is a question. Yes. Not explain the that is the the So constantly dealing with the leaders. It's more like a but the coming on comes from the you know really successful of growth and possible work outcomes. Yes. That is the time. I think that's what it is. That's been a struggle for me also. Where do I move this on? Where do I make the part? Yes, if I agree with you. Like eventually, somebody else is taking this benefit of the system, na? like the tab who controls. Yes. So there's another question from the room by Aditya Singh. I would love if you could explain some of the lines of the song with which you began your presentation. Sorry, sorry, Ashi. Uh, uh, the question is, uh, or the, the comment is, I would love if you could explain some of the lines of the song with which you began your presentation. 
so uh, so like uh, this this song like i will uh, uh, try to like it's my own interpretation and as, as like it's it's very open and thing so so this this uh, song by uh, this poem by faiz ahmed faiz i was introduced uh, through my parindesh film uh, um, it's a film uh, hotel ragi which which is a very political film so like in the end when the when the film ends it end with an open ending and very open like nothing like it's it doesn't show you the answer and the song plays and it's a very metaphor for me that you know like it, it whatever happens next but will keep on fighting will keep on you know resisting the system and continue and this song is like is all about that like whatever whatever pain whatever misery will receive but will keep on fighting and keep on fighting yes. thanks and there's another question in the chat thank you for your presentation aditya based on your journey what do you think is the greatest possibility biggest limitation and the gravest consequence of activism sorry sorry again based on your journey what do you think is the greatest possibility biggest limitation and the gravest consequence of activism I think this this thing I also uh, like trying to explore for myself, like what what will be the limitation and the consequence of it, and uh, if I take an action, what will be happen? So I think I don't think I have an answer for this right now, and uh, because uh, like I I like uh, I just started the, the this journey. I just started, and I think it will unfold like in future. Like that's what I feel like right now. We can take a couple of more questions, I guess. Or people can also share your own thoughts or reflections based on the presentation of the gate. Uh, basic uh, question. I mean, I can understand uh, before and after. Uh, how has your definition of the two words that were in the first slide? How okay, I think, what do you mean by activism? Like, what did you mean by activism? What do you mean uh, by now? And same with the art, like what will happen? How it changed? I think, uh, uh, like as a as a as a person, like I was introduced to activism uh, to a community. Uh, can you also share the question? Repeat the question because we couldn't hear it on the mic. So. Yes. 
before and after your journey or as definition of activism and art have, have uh, changed for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, act actually, it didn't change, but it evolved. So, uh, as a child, I was like, I was introduced to activism through one of my mentors, Lakshmi Narayan Devra, who, who is a Prama uh, Korku Samaj. And uh, with him, I directed two films, one is Fodder Stories. In that film, we were looking uh, onto a story of how, like, uh, availability of grass and uh, what is happening with the grass in that region. So specifically to that. And to grass, we were connected to, uh, like, milk producing buffaloes and cattle. And what was the community doing? So while I was making that film, I was doing, like, like I, I didn't make a film, he directed, and I was doing a camera. So at times I used to have conversation with him, like, uh, uh, like on on the lines of how how he see the whole situation and what is happening. So so he used to reply ki, uh, this narrative, you know, of documenting people life and bringing forth the uh, like uh, bringing forth the story that is going around with grass. And of course, grass is like uh, like uh, like grass has its own story, but the community story and the connection, and and the and the point of view people had on on the same thing on an unavailability. That I still remember there was a farmer and uh, uh, like his wife. They, I I took an interview on their farm and they were talking about how uh, made ka grass like made bandi karte hai na like uh, like fence not fence but that. Uh, yeah, border. border of the farm has they left grass to grow on it. They, ne they never uh, put a weedy side, and when once they put weedy side, they so they was talking about how they affected their next crop because they can't grow uh, like a certain dal or something, and also scare they got from a scarcity of grass availability. So it it like sit the, these things, you know, this this uh, like conversation that we bring forth in the dialogue uh, is in itself I see it as an activist. So because we I we documented, then we showed that film was made after that film that perspective of a of a person would 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 uh, never come out in, in in a different space, you know, in or any in a community place or anything. Uh, like that thing came out in a film and that was the interesting thing for me. And that's how where I picked that activism. He, you know, like actually in doing this dialogue within the film and showing it is an activism itself. Because now there is this dissemination of such thought, such, you know, and he, and he stated it very blandly, uh, like, uh, and uh, his, his uh, wife also contributed the same narrative that uh, like jungle to cut rahe hain aur wo to shrink hote ja rahe hain to wo jab shrink hote ja rahe hain to pressure badh raha hai aur ghas to kaise ugegi itne sare cattle khayenge and simply he put put the reality forth on the screen and that 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 you know that thing you know constantly thinking about your own backyard forest and what is happening because he was talking about encroachment so people are cutting trees people are like growing crops on the land of forest. So this thing in itself is an activism. And and in terms of art, this this uh, like this position of camera putting there and uh, like you know taking uh, taking this art and being present there was Lakshmi Bayar's activism. So constantly engaging with the community and what is community facing giving voice. So that's how I see it. So this is what I realized with Ektara Collective also. And uh, also the film, I, like I also the filmmaker I look up to, like yeah. So yes, I think I like I answered right the question. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can take one more question and close for now. So there was this question from from here, like from the room that. Anything that changed in you after the journey, right? Right, Ashwini, this one. Personal. 
पर्सनल जर्नी आई 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 बिलीव लाइक द जर्नी वाज लाइक वेरी वेरी अप एंड लोस लाइक देयर वाज टाइम्स व्हेन आई वाज लाइक वेरी लो एंड देयर वाज टाइम्स व्हेन आई वाज वेरी जॉय एंड लाइक इवन दो दैट पर्सनली व्हाट आई आई थिंक दैट इवन दो वी लिव इन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टाइम्स वेरी कॉन्फ्लिक्टिंग टाइम्स but whatever 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 is happening externally we have to participate in that but internally we have to take care of ourselves and enjoy the life that we live because that's what i seen every day like within the people i uh, in, like whom are engaged in the social issues are engaged in an activism form apart from it they had a life they were very happy people they cherished love in their life they were like they enjoyed food when it like when it was served to them so yeah that's what i personally believe like i i need to also enjoy life not just lose lose myself while i'm doing this all of this yes that's my personal learning out of this i think uh, we will close with that so thank you thank you aditya for uh, for your for sharing and like all the wonderful people who joined uh, and encouraged uh, the sharing uh, that we had just now uh, so we'll be continuing the presentations post lunch uh, we have two more share presentations today uh, one by rahul at 2:30 uh, like rahul had explored the area of social emotional learning and arts and then at 3:30 we have vaishna who had explored the area of impact of climate change and res and resilience of co uh, coastal communities so hoping to see you again at 230 once again thanks a lot for joining